In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Aviat's new technology, multi-band vendor agnostic. It's known as MB-VA. With 5G and fixed broadband rolling out across the country, operators are struggling to keep up with demand for increased capacity on their backbone. Upgrading legacy radios using traditional methods only delivers 1 to 2 gigabits of capacity. Using our MB-VA technology, we can now increase capacity up to 10 gigabits. We do this by installing a new E-band radio in parallel with the existing microwave radio. Here we've got a two-channel 23 gigahertz microwave radio delivering about 570 megabits of capacity and we've got the new E-band radio running at 10 gigabits. We've taken the output of our legacy microwave radio and fed it back into our WTM 4800 radio and using the internal layer one link aggregation engine we're able to combine that 570 megabits of microwave traffic with our 10 gigabits of E-band capacity. This gives us a very reliable, long distance, high capacity link. Now, let's go inside and take a look at the configuration of the radio. This is a network diagram of our vendor agnostic multiband configuration. You'll notice at the top, we have our dual carriers at 23 gigahertz, each one carrying 285 megabits of traffic for a combined capacity of 570 megabits. Our new WTM4800 radio can give us up to 10 gigabits of capacity. We cross connect the two radios with a one gigabit fiber cable. This will allow the WTM radio to use its layer one link aggregation engine and utilize the available capacity on the microwave radio combined with our 10 gigabits of capacity on the E-band radio and we combine our traffic together in a hitless fashion. Let's take a look at the radios and see how this is set up and then we'll generate some traffic using our MicroTik routers across the link. We've logged into the WTM4800 radio and I want to take a look at the configuration and show you how the layer 1 link aggregation is set up. To do this we click on L1 link aggregation. Now I've already defined VLAN 2 as our VLAN that's going to use to cross connect the radios and we're doing this on gigabit ethernet 1 slash 2. Now I assigned the bandwidth of 525 megabits of available bandwidth across this link. If you remember earlier we have a total capacity of 570 however we need to reserve some overhead for the layer 1 link aggregation to work properly. So we're going to set this up for 525 of usable bandwidth and reserve the rest of the capacity for our overhead. Once that's done we press commit and save it and our L1LA is configured. Now let's go back to the dashboard and take a look at our interfaces to see what's going through our radio. Our dashboard represents all of the interfaces on the radio. Radio 1 represents the actual capacity what's going over the air. Now this is a combined capacity of both the E-band radio and the microwave radio. Now right now you'll notice there's just a few kilobits so this is our management overhead talking back and forth. But in a minute we're going to generate some traffic and we'll actually take a look and see how much traffic is flowing over the E-band and how much is going over the microwave radio. So as we look across here you'll notice our E-band radio is set up and I've limited it to 64 qualm so that we can get a total capacity of about 8.1 gigabits. So for our demonstration the E-band maxes out at 8.1 gigabits. We've got our layer 1 link aggregation engine up and running here again carrying a few kilobits of traffic. And you'll notice that it's up, actually up and running by gigabit ethernet 1 slash 2. This is where the microwave radio plugs into the WTM radio. And if you notice, we are running full speed all the time. And the reason for that is our layer 1 link aggregation engine generates dummy traffic and fills the link to full capacity at all times. And then when we have user traffic to pass, we swap out the zeros for the actual user payload. So we know this is up and running correctly when we see our full capacity running on our Ethernet interface. This is again the one running up to the 23 gigahertz radio. So I'm going to go over to the tab for our MicroTik router and let's generate a little bit of traffic here and then see what the interfaces are sending over the air. We're going to do a bi-directional test and we'll start the traffic generating. Now we look back over at the radio interface. You'll notice that radio 1 is showing us 8.67 gigabits transmit 
and about 8.69 gigabits received. So pretty much 8.6, 8.7 gigabits in both directions over the air. Now, if you remember, our E-band carrier has a maximum of 8.1 gigabits of capacity. So that's being filled. And then our microwave radio is coming across Ethernet uh, 1 slash 2, and that's delivering 540 megabits of traffic. So if you add these two numbers together, our 8.1 plus our 5.4, you're seeing roughly 8.6 gigabits of combined capacity going over the air. This is also being displayed here in our L1 LA engine. We can see about that same capacity of combined capacity of both microwave and EBAN being sent over the air across this link. So if you'd like to learn more about Aviat's multiband vendor agnostic technology, use the link below in the show notes to get a hold of us and we'll be happy to help you configure it for your network.